He brought this up two or three weeks ago, you know, so yeah. Journal Times is finally catching up. At least he got there. And, we better uh, slow down. Yeah, Give we got to slow down. Give him a chance. chance. Give that journal a chance. You know, <laughs> crushing them. Yeah. It's 7.45 when we record this. What time it is for you, I have no idea. But we're talking Racine and we're back. We've got the uh, man in charge of curmudgeonry here, George Myers. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> You're not supposed to laugh when I say that. <laughs> I got that from Rick Jones, man. That was, that was, that, that is a, that is a, uh, that's as close as I've gotten to hate mail. <laughs> <laughs> I got Kermudgeon, I got a uh, name Kermudgeon from the uh, the uh, head of DPW, the, the commissioner well, of Well, before you Works. get grouchy, let me introduce Jim <laughs> okay. Spotik, our producer, and I'm Dr. Ken Yorga. And uh, first thing up on, on, the, on the agenda here today, oh, we got to cover this, commercials. Oh. You know, Talking Racine has gotten so popular that, <laughs> that YouTube is now running commercials. Skip what that means is there's enough of you guys watching on, on uh, YouTube that they think they can sell you stuff. So if you, if you don't want to see the commercials, entirely up to you. We're also on Rumble, on Facebook, and TalkingRacine.com is probably the best place to go. And uh, it'll come out to you every Monday morning. Anyway, now on to the main topics. And the first one is uh, the, the issue of the city clerk and why the city clerk didn't really run the election here in Racine, but she did seem to be real involved in the election down in Kenosha. And what the heck is that all about? The, why? the farming out of our city clerk to Kenosha to run their election, or yeah. help run their election. Well, they had some chaos down there, apparently. Their, their clerk More than we resigned. Do. More than we do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's a good question. I don't know. Well, anyway. We should do a comparative analysis sometime. Yeah. Who'd win? The person that has more or less chaos? I don't know. Yeah. I, 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 I... But anyway, the uh, the clerk down there retired, and the new clerk was on board just just about the same time as the election, so you couldn't right. really expect him to run the election. And then the the deputy clerk, she resigned or she quit, uh, kind of like right in the middle of this, right? Yeah, yeah I, I, I think that's a little, it's a little foggy, place, you know, yeah. exactly when she she took off, but she was the one, the spokesperson they called her. Uh, so so exactly. how the heck did our clerk end up in Kenosha? Well, you know, I mean, what do you question. think, George? That, that, that's a good question. I, 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 my only thought is that they needed somebody who could legally run an election. Now that I'm, that I'm, I'm, the reason I believe that is the case is because this this group uh, CTCL mm -hmm. that's come in and took over the elections up in Green Bay they are now being sued and there's all kinds of things going on with throwing out ballots and practically throwing out the whole election because it was illegally run because it was run by a group that was not that was outside the government and and the city clerk and the county clerks are in charge of running elections. Now, if they're in charge of running elections, there must be some qualifications for it. And that's where I run into a little bit of a problem with Tara Coolidge. I'm not quite sure what her qualifications are and how do they qualify them. Well, she but, was but, in the clerk's office here in Racine for a number of years, so I, I guess she was the, the next man up. Well, all I'm saying is, is I, I never saw a degree, never heard about, oh, you know, you know yeah. like when you graduate from law school, you become a lawyer, you know, you remember the bar now, now you can become a judge. Say <laughs> because you're a member of the you can actually run for judge. Yeah. Well, if if this if this city clerk is that type of position, where, where's her certificate that says she's now official city clerk? That that's the problem. But otherwise, if that's the case, then that's the thing that Kenosha would be in because their 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 clerk had re retired, left just before the election started. It was time to get going, and their deputy clerk wasn't official official yet. So they had to come down and get like a lawyer. You know, you're gonna you yeah. have to go get a lawyer to come up and do this work for you, like a circuit judge, or sort of. yeah, like yeah. a circuit, yeah. like a circuit judge or something like that. And they has to do that for you uh, while they get their act straightened out and get somebody to do it. That that's that's the closest I see. In other words, she was the closest legal person to run it. Now, that's pure speculation. Do yeah. not go around 
quoting me as George said that this is why because because that's that's just my speculation. You guys ask me, I give you an answer. And right? when you ask me a question and I answer, it's your responsibility what the answer is. All I do is answer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> nice try, George. So this uh, you're the one that's got to pay. All I did was answer the question. <laughs> All right. Well, the the clerk that uh, they had retired in July, apparently the original clerk in Kenosha. Uh, the no, well, let's show some names out there. Yeah, Michelle Nelson. That's Michelle Nelson was the one, and they called her the spokesperson in Kenosha. So when the uh, news media came to talk about the election in Kenosha, they. They, they talked to Michelle Nelson. She was the spokesperson. Matter of fact, I'm going to play a quick little video here, and I'll show you, you know, who she is and what she was doing in Kenosha. They'll be greeted by a greeter and then move on to the ballot staging area where they would state their name and address and show appropriate photo ID, and then they're given their ballot. They can then pull off to the side and take their time to select their choices, and then they would deposit their ballot, um, which is in the envelope, on the way out. Michelle Nelson with Kenosha's city clerk's office says the early turnout more than she's ever seen before in her eight years of working elections. We've already had more voters today than in the first three days combined of early voting for the 2016 presidential election. So Vicki Selko sends an email to Michelle Nelson in Kenosha explaining uh, this uh, a plan that's going to be executed for uh, the for the elections. So Michelle takes on the lead position because there is no clerk apparently in Kenosha. All right, I, I just want to uh, just throw a couple names in here. Deborah Salas was the official city clerk of Kenosha up until July of 2020. Now this is getting close to the election. You know that that's just what four months before the election comes up in November. So she uh, retires. There's no replacement for her, but the deputy clerk is this Michelle Nelson. So, so, so right now we're talking about someone who's a deputy clerk, but apparently she's not totally qualified to be a clerk. She's a deputy clerk, and that's how Tara gets pulled in because right. Tara is a full-fledged clerk. She's a deputy clerk, not yet a full-fledged clerk. That, that's the way it's looking. Yeah. Right. And the guy who came on as clerk, it was like he was announced as the new clerk. A Just month right before. No, it wasn't like, oh. even that long. It was like two weeks. Yeah, yeah. All right. two, it, was, weeks. it was a month. It was in October. So yeah. couldn't, couldn't really be expect him to be. You know, no. I, I got a question. What about? All right. So you've got the the clerk, the city clerk in Kenosha, who obviously knew there was an election coming. Bails out in July. Yeah, that's now, really strange. Yeah, it, but, but it, was ahead. there a conflict there that maybe brought that on, or was it just the fact hey, I'm getting out of here? And guess what, Michelle, you're going to be the you're going to take charge of it now, or and then they left that open from uh, July to October, that clerk's office, conveniently open for CTCL to come in and run the election. Because Michelle didn't run it. And eventually, at some point, Michelle quits. Prior, it, either after the election or before the election, and you, she's gone. Those are the and only two options. <laughs> and, you, and you can bet that Tara wasn't running it either. <clears throat> right. She may have been officially up there to give it some appearance of legitimacy, but she was not, and there's no way she came up there and ran it. And plus the fact that we know that CTCL, from what they did in Green Bay, when they they come in, they take over. Right. That's why the Green right. Bay clerk left because she couldn't even get into her own room that she had needed to get into run the election. Well, so. I mean, it's not legal for that to happen. Now, what happened under their control that hasn't been determined yet. But it's not legal for them to do that. No, it's not. That's not. <clears throat> but but there's this big vacuum down there in Kenosha, so CTL can just walk into this vacuum, right, and start running things, you know, because there's no clerk, there's no, you know, there's nobody to do it, and the person there they have farmed it out to is coming up from Kenosha. And she's got plenty to do. Down, coming up from Racine, and she's got plenty to do down in Racine. Right. She doesn't come go up and spend. So the next who's two running weeks it in Racine? Kenosha. You know, yeah, so obviously. <laughs> I mean, she's not running yeah. two cities. I mean, why? So CTCL is basically taking yeah. over the, the yeah, election both, in, both in Kenosha. So Just very nice. Mayor uh, Corey Mason in Racine, Mayor John Antranium in Kenosha were probably the two that orchestrated the elections through their staff, uh, and and we've got a number of emails. Uh, back and forth with Kenosha and uh, Michelle Nelson, and it looks like 
that it was really orchestrated, CTCL and the mayor's staff in both cities well, ran the election. It kind of fits in with the whole five mayor group, you right. know. In other words, Corey Mason, Corey Mason well, was part of it, yeah, was the center of this of this five mayor <laughs> thing, and it was his responsibility to get these other mayors in line, and let's let's what's going with this program. And so naturally, I mean, there's Corey Mason with Kenosha. It just works perfectly. And, and now you're going right down to the source of it all with Tara sitting right at the mayor's elbow, see? So she, right. it's, it's, it works yep. perfectly for her to just come on up and, or come on down and help a little bit in Kenosha. So one of the things that is kind of interesting, and I know, George, you're with hot government, um, Racine County has responded to some of the emails, uh, not in a sense that they've given the emails, but they've asked for money from hot government. They've paid them some money for it. We've had they responded to a request for, request. for information. Yeah. So there may be some emails Public coming out of Racine County, and um, uh, that should be interesting. And I know for a fact that Michelle Nelson was uh, th th in Racine County. They were asked, uh, you know, what emails may have been uh, sent from Michelle. That may also, Michelle may have talked to Tara Coolidge from Racine. So there may be some interesting. Uh, this is a way bigger picture here. It's, it's still unclear how all this was orchestrated and who actually put this plan together. Because this plan that they talk about in these emails was the voter safe voting plan that was orchestrated uh, supposedly by the mayors, but it's obvious the mayors did not put that together, that CTCL put that together, brought it into the mayors, and then it was much the, too extensive a program yeah, exactly. and too complicated for those five guys from all over the state. Now you're going all the way up to Green Bay, right, you know, right. <laughs> all the way down to Kenosha, and they're getting together and coming with this plan. Cut me a break. Well, yeah. we haven't found out what exactly happened here. I mean, the elections definitely needed to be looked at. The elections, as historically, they've been done, but it was done inappropriately. I mean, all this list yeah. of all the stuff that they're looking at addressing, it's a nice list. But really, what happened? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, yeah, what happened? Where you know, and it is being investigated, and and they're going. It's, it's going on in more than just Wisconsin too. There's some other states that yeah. are really looking into this stuff. When are they going to wrap it up? I want to know. Before the next election, maybe that'd be nice. Uh, well, what they're doing in Arizona may take a while. Two, two and a half million votes, yeah, something, something like, like that. that yeah. they're, and they're they're going out knocking on doors. They're, this is a real forensic audit going out knocking on doors. Is there really a voter at this address? Yeah. Well, I think one of the things that. Uh, with this was that voter plan, and I and you know I kind of like to go into a, just I know we got other subjects, but that voter plan I think there's more to that because when that voter plan came in and it was created by CTCL or supposedly by CTCL, and it was dropped into the city, who benefited from that? That was Zuckerberg's. Uh, I'd like to see the plan. Well, it's out there. We've we've yeah. seen the plan, yeah. yeah. And it's it's extensive, and it talks about it very little talks about actually actually protecting with COVID. It talks more about how to. Uh, implement the election and how to get people to vote and get the vote out and get the machines out, but drop the boxes, all of that. But who benefits from that? You know, when you talk about a RICO claim, you know, a racketeering influence and corruption organization, I mean, you really may have some RICO here with the fact that a third party organization comes in and overtakes a election with their plan and their people and orchestrate Gee, this. Funniest thing, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's, it, it, there's a possibility Well, it, it's the old saying, I, it, and it goes back a ways, you know, to a, to a guy by the name of Joseph Stalin. He says, it's not the voters that count, it's the people that count the votes. Yeah. And, and, that, and that's... Hey, Joe uh, had it nailed, didn't yeah, he? He, he? Yeah, he knew, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and unfortunately, we saw a lot of that uh, in a recent election. And, and it, it's the... Uh, yeah, that's I so you ask you ask who is it? Well, we're going to find out. The, yeah. the, the, You'll come the, out. the investigations are You'll coming come out. out, and eventually uh, it looks like it's coming to Wisconsin too. There's there's, yeah. there's uh, coming to a town near you. Yeah. <laughs> Racine, Racine will be in the forefront. Yeah, we're, we're going we're <laughs> yeah. You might see us. Yeah, in the papers, we might gain national prominence here pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah. Why can't it be something good for a change? Uh, it would be nice, would it? Once yeah. in a while, you it. Okay. <laughs> well, let's move on to our old friend. Sandy Widener. Yeah. And what's what's going on with Sandy? Well, uh, there's a a 55 page, was it a brief? A brief uh, to the appeals. It's court. called brief, yeah. but that that means there's there's little briefings about legal stuff. It doesn't mean the, the document itself is brief. Yeah. Well, Not in 55 pages. What I see happening here is uh, uh, Sandy's attorney, 
did not like the decision that came down, and I don't blame them. You know, I think it was a horrible decision what they decided. They supported the local courts entirely. All of this stuff should be secret. This should all be a closed case. You don't have any right, Ms. Widener, to see any of this stuff. Yeah, and attorney's so, uh, eyes only. Your own attorney yeah. can see it, but he can't talk to you about your own case. Uh, yeah, open crazy. records Absolute request. Bullshit. I lost amazing conflict but, of data yeah. and interest. But what her attorney basically is saying is, okay, publish your decision. Own it. Be proud of it. If you think this is good work, because all of these, not all cases are made part of the public record. That's right. right. And he's saying, well, yeah, okay, let the public see this. Right, let's publish it. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I know. I, 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 I've, I've had uh, not just one case actually, but mine obviously didn't get published. I'm just a pro se litigant. I didn't have any, you know. I just quoted a couple of laws, and I actually won. But the point was, it was never became part of the uh, what you would do as, as as reporting. In other words, you wouldn't use it. You wouldn't quote that case in a future case. Right. But when he's got pages, just pages and pages, well fifty-five of, pages. And, and a lot of it is just <clears throat> listing the names of court cases. Now, I don't know how many. Did, did you count the number of court cases? No, no, no. I, it's, it's 40, I, I read 40. the whole thing, but I didn't get into you the you know, uh, reading each much. citation. Yeah. But it, it's a huge number. So, so it's very, very official. And I can see where this would be. He's saying, all right. Don't don't just pretend this doesn't exist. Don't pretend I'm not. Uh, I'm just sloppily running through. The, here's all this. Stage. You're going to own that now. You're going to own this this thing. Bro. Right. If the appeals court comes back and says, well, it seems like the court ruled. It's almost impossible for them to say that the court ruled correctly. Impossible. First off, let's go back to the beginning. Well, if they did, own it. Oh, well, <laughs> own it. Right. There was 18 emails that were in a PowerPoint production that was put in front of the executive committee uh, saying that this was attorney-client privilege. Yeah, but then a couple of them were removed. Well, The appellate court sold the... Uh, no, the yeah, well, after, after uh, Widener took it to court, it went to the appeals court. The appeals court came back and said, hey, you Take better look at look. this. Yeah. So <laughs> what Gaskergevich, the first judge, did was he released five of the 18 emails. So, so how many emails are there now? Well, there's 70. Now it went back to a new court and it went in and they dropped in 70 emails that were so they, they had 18 they re reduced the number by two maybe five. Th by, five? by five by five 18 minus five equals 70. 70. that makes, that sense. makes sense it's the yeah, new math yeah, yeah. so this is how crazy <laughs> this thing is so i i don't know what what the logic is on the on the defendants which is the city of racine and scott letney you start out with 18 emails you reduce it by five because the appeals court said you five of these emails have no they're nonsense. They're, yeah. they're cra they're all 18 are crazy. We all saw them. They're all crazy and there's nothing in them. But now we went to Kenosha. After it came back from the appeals court, Weiner took it to Gudinci, wanted out of Gaskergevich's court, ended up in Kirkman's court in Kenosha, which is worse. <laughs> so you go to Kirkman's court, he seals everything. Nobody yeah. knows anything. And he seals it from Sandy. Even. Sandy <laughs> 70. Now there's 70 apparently files or emails or whatever. And you go from 18 minus 5 to 70, now it goes to the appeals court again. This is the craziest thing, and it's five years. Has it been that long? Four now? or five years, yeah. Wow. It's Thinking slideshow on an open records request. And this is, but that's, this is what's interesting, though. You know, open records have now gotten some mainstream uh, talk. You know, people are talking about, you know, what's happening in these elections? How come we can't get the records? Well, guess what? This is the way it's been. We've been yeah. singing this for a long, a long time. time. You know that, hey, you cannot get records out of these cities, and particularly Racine. Racine is about as. Cr it's almost like a criminal syndicate that you try to, you know, hey, boss, can I get the... Yeah, the, know, I, the idea know? is, in a, in a free country, you're supposed to be able to see what the government's doing. It's yeah, supposed absolutely. to be wide open, and that's why the FOIA, the Freedom of Information Act, was passed federally, and, and each state has got its own open rec records laws because of that simple fact that you, it's your government... This is the United States of America. This isn't the Soviet Union? You know, right. this is this, right. this, yeah. is, this is this is this is our <laughs> government. We're supposed to be able to see what's going on in there, but the people in government are saying, "No, you can't see what's it going on." It would scare you. It, it, they, you. You shouldn't yeah. see this. It yeah. would scare we know you. More it would we, outrage you. Well, <laughs> I think people have kind of woken up to this, and I mean, you know, obviously Widener was early on in this. She took it on as you know, as really a civic duty to say, "Hey, you know." We should be able to look at our emails, you know, her particular her emails. You know what they always say to the citizen: if you haven't done anything wrong, right. you've got nothing to hide. Right. 
should be the, should work the other way around. Absolutely, too, right? it should. <laughs> Even more so. I yeah. think there's way, I think there's these 70, now you went from 18 to 5, 13, and now you're at 70. What's in those? Now what's in those emails? You know, now really what's in them? Yeah, so that's like, that definitely that's like 55 new emails. Yeah. Or slides. Uh, they, they got some more yeah. verbiage in there. Very wrong, and I can't believe the appeals court, even the liberal appeals court that is up there now, uh, could look at this and say this makes sense. And I think what uh, her attorney was saying is, if you believe this to be true, then publish it. Make it exactly. yours. Yep. yep. So I wonder if they will. I'm thinking. Oh, that would be no. great. No, I'm thinking no. They're gonna <laughs> they're gonna somehow pass the buck. Uh, but well. someday, at some point in time, this is all gonna come out yep. in the open. It will. It's all gonna just spill out on the ground. Everybody, you'll get a chance to see it. You'll see just how ridiculous this case is. But by then, you know. Corey Mason will have been mayor. He's probably moved on to something else. Oh, probably, you know, All of the aldermen that have been ruining this city for years, they, they'll be moved on to something else. And you and I will be... Uh, we'll still know, be here. Wait, waiting for our next <laughs> Social Security check. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got, uh, we got one more thing we can kick around here a little bit today. And this one has to do with who is Kane Communications Group and why did they get a $230,000 contract from the city of Racine without any bids being submitted? Right. Now, there is a, a uh, provision in the city ordinances that say, well, if, if it's under $25,000, and if the city has uh, done business with this particular contractor in the past, and it's been a successful interaction, you can go ahead and give them a contract for twenty-five thousand dollars. Oh yeah, it's got to be a little bit more than that. It's also got to be that there's it's it's uh, time-wise and and complication-wise that it's easy, just a lot easier to go with right. this company. It can't be just yeah. uh, simple. Well, we've done business with them before, so we get to do them again. All right. So so there's there was there's more to the violation than just simply. Uh, what what it first right. appears. To be, but right. they have to get the approval of the city council. And Absolutely, they, and they did. Yes, they did. <laughs> bobblehead after bobblehead, 14 bobbleheads yeah. on, on it. Well, here's the thing. One. We brought this up two or three weeks ago, you know, so our yeah. Journal Times is finally catching up. At least you got there. And, we better uh, slow down. Yeah, give we got to slow down. Give them a chance. a chance. Give that Journal a chance. You know, <laughs> crushing them. And anyway, that's Kane Communications, Kimberly Kane. She's been in the game since probably 2013. Uh, we, she's a huge donator to a donator to the uh, everybody. <laughs> yeah, just the well. Yeah, and I think that's yeah. that's the important. Yeah, yeah. that's the it's important a part. Play. She she yeah. is yeah all the way up to Tammy Baldwin, at, uh, right the United States Senator, all the way down to uh, to, to uh, Corey local. Mason. You know, yeah. the local people. So and, and she's run for alderman too. Right. She she challenged uh, Christina Saracen to. Uh, John Dickert pulled her in, said, "I want you to, I want you to run because Christina was a little bit too independent." She so what's not like to that. like? You know, right. it's, it's only two hundred thirty thousand dollars. And I think, I think you got it. This, I, I this, think is, I highlighted this it. is less than the get out the vote bus right. cost. <laughs> Twenty thousand dollars cheaper. It's oh only, my gosh. it's only uh, not a little bit more than nine oh. times the cost of the. Right. Of the well, bus. this is the one where she's right. going to go and you know get people vaccinated in the city of Racine because they don't know how to do it. You know, yeah. especially black people don't know how to do it. They they have the hardest time. And that's, a, out. that's a very expensive type of promotional thing to do. I mean, you t two hundred thirty thousand dollars is a deal. <laughs> yeah. I want to put some ads on we, we, we got two I mean, or three posters bogus. we have to make up. You yeah. Know? Yeah. I mean, they, yeah, they should have been driving the bus around to do this. You know? <laughs> no, okay. there's, a, there's something in there the journal wrote. It was a quote from Powell. I'll go, go a couple pages in there. I highlighted it on that. Go on oh, there. Okay. Right there. This is the one I like this. Shannon Powell, the city's communication director, explained that the Vaccinate Racine campaign was just an extension of the Safer Racine campaign created by Kane Communications. Paul pointed out the staff from Kane knew how to use the city's social media. They already knew the city staff who are working on the vaccine response and worked with the team doing the coronavirus website previously. Saving four or five hours of work that someone knew and would maybe, have to come in. Maybe a hundred dollars. <laughs> I mean, nobody knows how to do that. They can't find yeah, anybody know, we're, we're that knows really social media. Got, you got, got, you got to learn all the staff. You know, <laughs> you got to. I mean, you it's got, so. You bogus. can find your way to room two hundred four. Well, yeah, I mean, it's a lot. There's a lot there to do. I mean, it's been so to room two hundred four. It ain't easy to find, George. Uh, 
<laughs> Don't make fun of these people. Oh, my God. I mean, it's so bogus. It's, it's just laughable. It's like, you know, pay to play. It's Racine. I mean, you want to know why we are in a situation we're in? There it is. Yeah. No, oh one God. after another after another. Well, I told you before, I found an old disc with uh, evidence of corruption on it. And it was like, <laughs> look at some of these people that have been in city government for... Well, maybe some of them are still there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But, oh, leave. my God. It's like watching The Sopranos. <laughs> It's amazing. <laughs> we'll never run out of material. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> never. I mean, this is our own at-home version of political fiction theater. Yeah. I, I don't know how many of you saw political fiction theater several years ago, oh, but like it was funny as hell. It really yeah. was. We, it we, we don't even cover all. You know, the, the latest one, the latest one that I got to get. Now, we, we're just pulling out of a pandemic right now. People want to get out, you know, and we've been cooped up in... So the city of Racine comes and gets a grant for the police department for a new program. We're going to get those bicyclers that are going against the lights, and we're going to get those jaywalkers. They've been driving me crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know. We're jaywalkers. finally going to get. Yeah. I mean, this. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we had, we didn't even cover that story. Oh my gosh. I think most of them are on drugs. I, I tell too. You, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anybody that's walking in the middle of the block, I think but, they should get a drug yeah, I, I, I would just go, you know, Jeff, you're talking about getting new material. We get so much new material, we, we don't even, can't even start planning the show on Wednesday. You have to yeah. wait to see what's happening on Thursday, Friday, and yeah. Saturday. It just keeps coming. <laughs> yeah, my, my, what, and if you get a common council <laughs> meeting, it's like, oh my God, yeah. now what? <laughs> now you got, oh my God, and all new material. Anyway, yeah. there you go. That's it for today. We appreciate your presence. And uh, like I said, if you don't want to watch commercials on YouTube, check one of the other platforms out. And come back and see us next week, wherever you are. We enjoy having you.